I have an idea. And basically what it has equated to is me painting something once and then painting over it a second time. Most Unchained. Every piece is an experiment, as they say, and something that I haven't done a whole lot of is value sketching or underpainting. It goes by a few different uh, descriptions because it has a few different approaches and uses, etc. It kind of depends what you're after. There is, like, big thought. I am creating a monochromatic scale of uh, textures and, and a gradient. Then I can tone that out any way I choose. That could be an ink wash. I could be covering just a part of it with, with partially with my airbrush spray. I could use the airbrush like a... Why are you scratching on the door? You have ruined my entire train of thought. What is this, a baby bear? What I was saying in short before I was interrupted was that you have basically your underpainting and then how you choose to color it is yet another series of experiments to try out. In this video, I'll be using the airbrush to carry mine out. So let us take a look at how it is achieved. Do you like dragons? Me too. Let's get to work. On the palette, I have black, buff, white, and underbelly blue. Got a very wide, cruddy brush. And to start off, what I'll be doing, load up a healthy amount onto my brush. And yeah, this model is very large. So it's, it's going to suit our purposes very well. And yeah, I don't know if I would try this on a smaller model, but these rolling, these larger rolling volumes are easy to work with. You can see I'm just over brushing, kind of sketching out the musculature, leaving a fairly heavy shadow area visible, just like so. Let's zoom it in for a second. Now the end goal of this is not to be the prettiest princess at the dance, but the fastest. So we'll just carve this out as quickly as we can. I have a slight amount of water involved so I get sort of a medium smooth coat. I wouldn't quite describe this as a dry brush. It certainly becomes that as I run out of paint and move away. And in some of these more downward facing angles that's exactly what I'll be doing. But there is a small amount of moisture involved. So also, it's just the first pass, I'll add some white in with my buff. And then take all of these gradients a little bit further. In fact, let me could probably use another coating of buff. Yeah, I'm just pressing very lightly. Now, being sure to pull the paint at a nice sideways angle. If I do that correctly, then these black crevices will show through. It's okay if I fill some of them in, like on the top of the shoulder. We have other tricks up our sleeve yet. But now, adding just a little bit of white to that. Take things a little bit further, just covering the upper kind of 10, 15 percent of the area. Just like so. Go back for a second pass. And yeah, I'm just painting along and deciding what looks good, what looks passable. From here as I'm going it, it seems like two coats. This gets me uh, close to where I'd like to be. And it is also another goal of mine to pull the underbelly blue into some of the downward facing angles. Um, you know, I, I still want to have some action, but using a colder tone, kind of limiting the temperature of the colors to follow. I think that'll be a good method. We get some kind of 
cold shadows and warm highlights happening. So just applying it the same method, but using a very light denim blue. And there's some areas, like on the chest, it's going to transition back up to the buff. I can sort of wet blend that together, no problem. Yeah, I really want to kind of section the model off. You can see how the light is falling down on the figure, and it's, it's you know, if I hold it more at the zenithal angle, if the light is coming down from the, the top more, I can tell where the light is gathering on the neck. So just doing what the light is telling me, using that as my guide. Sometimes I'm not touching down with the entire cruddy brush. Just use a flap of it, but let me continue along. We'll jump back for the next step. Okay, fast and loose. <laughs> you can see how the rough volumes are in place, you know, keeping that blue on the downward facing angles, uh, leaving a lot of black shadow in the middle because I'm going to be kind of filling in the mid-tone um, with the airbrush, but there are some areas that need more sharpening. So although this is a very fast technique, the model is large, so there isn't really any way around it. It's going to be time consuming to a certain degree, no matter how I slice it. Uh, there are some areas that I want to go through, some of these more major areas, or perhaps some spots where I have lost a bit of detail in my rushedness but I'll be going back through and blacklining certain areas. I mean, he has all of these, these hard panels. I want to make sure that they're all looking their sharpest. Granted, I could throw a wash on or something as I, as I go on, so I'm, I'm not going to go too crazy on it, but there are some more major areas, um, you know, mainly like down the, the stomach and tail. There's this little engraved spot on his chest, this kind of twin-tailed comet. You know, some of those more bold details. So I want to make sure that they're looking sharp and defined. And if I'm feeling especially adventurous, I can go in with a, a larger brush, kind of thin down some of this black. And, you know, the musculature is so chunky on this model already. <laughs> Whoops, his, his wing is blocking some of the view. Yeah, see, you know, again, that those deep scales, that texture is going to help hold on to the paint. So yeah, I'll be lining, kind of dark lining, glazing along. And I'll also be dropping some edge highlighting in place. I can create more texture if I'd like, you know, on some of the, some of these scales, I want them to have a bit of kind of rugged sharpness to them. Let's see, I can slightly uh, stipple along. And yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit of a time consuming stage, but the better that this, uh, initial step looks, the better that the, the following step will look, and that's going to be the fun part. It's, it's very satisfying once I finally pull out the airbrush, and here and there, adding white into the mixture as well, just to get at the you know, correct volumes. And every once in a while, I'll look at this model at, it, at elbow's length, and just make sure I have some of those larger volumes in place. I want to have a spot of light coming down right on his face and shoulder, the top of the forearm, this area where the, the tail curves around. I have some uh, reference photos of the model unpainted, and from that fixed angle I could see where the light was falling. And yeah, we really want to, you know, to save time, just kind of work from that primary viewing angle. So let me get things edge highlighted and sharpened up. It's going to take a while, but I'm here for it. Happy to add a dragon to my collection.
Okay, day two. I have the blue undertone applied. Um, yeah, it's, of course, I had to do something very, very large, right? Um, to demonstrate this technique that could have been done on something much smaller and more simple, but it is impressive to see. Look at the size of it. So the first thing that I like to do is get a little bit of that stomach scale and underwing colored in. So I have some hearth fire added to the airbrush and thinned down. You can see I've already been practicing it a little bit, but yeah, this is going to be the fun part. Just kind of very, very gradually laying down a thin filter of this yellow over the blue, over the black, just like so. Yeah, I was a little nervous. You know, I didn't know exactly how the yellow would look over this black, but I think everything is coming out smooth enough. It makes sort of a green tone. And yeah, I'll be running that up his belly chest area as well. See how that looks when it as it as it transitions over the ivory portion. Not too bad. You're beautiful. After much, much extensive masking with poster putty, I hope I got it all. Now is the time to add a mixture of sanguine base and cador red base. Um, you know, just kind of going for like a mid-tone because I already have the depths, the shadows, a lot of mid, granted, and I'm just kind of trying to add to the middle of this progression, filtering over the whole thing, of course. Let's take a closer look. This is the moment I've been waiting for. All of that tedious work could just be washed away in one careless pass of the airbrush. <gasps> Let's see what happens. A little splattery, let me spray that off on my thumb. All right, I'll just pull a very gentle filter in place. I'm getting a splatter here and there, but I can just wipe it away. Filter over once again. I want to make sure I'm running things oh so... Yeah, look at that splatter come out of there. So I'll kind of spray it off target and then gradually mist it over. I could probably give my airbrush a nice uh, cleaning, but it's working out. Look at that. All the values are still showing through and you want to let this dry and then come back for another pass. Like it's it's very tempting. There are some areas where I got it good, like in his, his armpit here, that looks nice. I want to hit the neck again, but I'm going to run the risk of oversaturating an area and the paint, if it becomes runny, it's not going to be a filter anymore. I mean, I guess you could be spraying ink through this, you could be spraying a wash through it, but Right now, my fear is that things will run too deeply into the crevices. I'll lose that depth. I'll lose that darkness. So just very carefully filtering over things after they've had a chance to kind of dry and remain sticking in place. I'll try to leave the, um, the horns as well. I want the horns and talons to be black. There are some areas that I'll have to paint by hand, but I'm not going to include that on the tutorial. I'm just going to tell you now. I'll be picking out those teeth and nails and all that. But man, this is uh, it's coming together nicely after you know a few test sprays and such. I think I can just uh, continue clipping along at this, and we will see what the filter result appears as. Well, hey now, look at that. Man, what fun seeing it all come together. So the only thing left to do is yet another very lengthy step. Um, <laughs> I, I want to reline everything. I will try to hold myself back a little bit. I don't want to recover the entire model, but there are some areas I think that deserve some attention, those kind of you know primary focus areas, some of the areas where the, the light was spilling out most heavily. Um, and, and I think that's going to add to the, the look of this piece, having things, you know, fall into a sort of sketchiness and raised points of focus. 
So putting a lot of attention into like the shoulder and face area, the tip of the tail, you know, the, the whole kind of a, a big part of this is finding a way to get things done quickly and effectively and artistically, you know, some kind of look of coolness to it. So we can use our little kind of artistic embellishments as a reason and guide to cut a few corners. There's, there's your pro tip for the day. And maybe, like, I don't, yeah, I don't want to go crazy uh, blending in too many places. I, I did a lot of blending. I want the sketchiness to show through. Yeah, there's just a couple kind of creases and bumps that need to be brought up. And the same applies to the yellow areas as well. So I'll just be chopping along through this, and we'll see where we get. Most excellent. Something different indeed. Did I really save myself any time? Probably. <laughs> it's hard to say. This was such a... I think it was the right model for this. I wanted something that was going to look uh, astonishing, something impressive. Um, but yeah, it was, it was time intensive based on the size. It could have been something maybe the size of the model's leg to demonstrate this. It could have been a smoother surface. You could do the same kind of thing with uh, tanks, you know, or, or some scenery. You know, it could work on any kind of vehicles. Um, so it was fun, but yeah, I put a lot of effort into it, and did I really... I don't think the method was to make something better than usual, but I wanted to create something artistic and quick, so... I'm still rolling those thoughts around in my head. I don't think it took me as long as it normally would, but with a little bit more time, I could have had something painted in the usual way. I don't know. I'm happy to have this uh, this experiment and this tutorial in our repertoire and our encyclopedia of references. I did have fun, and as you can tell, I, I'm still just kind of roiling with thoughts, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know how you feel in the comment section down below. Feel free to suggest any content that you'd like to see. As supporters of this Patreon, I'm happy to hear from you, and I'm very thankful. So. Thank you. Cheers. Remain unchained.